how can this white Nile crocodile and these strange looking other crocodiles potentially save their species from extinction? Let's talk about it. Hey beautiful boy. Now there aren't many white Nile crocodiles out there. There are apparently three, but I personally only know of two definitively which is absolutely crazy considering between like 2005 and 2014 over half a million Nile crocs were hatched out. So potentially out of millions, only two white ones hatched out and survived. That's pretty crazy. Watch this. Or not. <laughs> this is the incubator with 15,000 Nile crocodile eggs in here. It's absolutely toasty and very humid as you can see by the condensation on the lens. 15,000 eggs at one farm and they're still collecting more daily. And there are over 40 croc farms in South Africa alone. I mean, with the worldwide market, about 750,000 crocodiles are hatched out annually, which is an insane number and still with that, you see hardly any white ones. I'm watching you. So now crocodiles have one of the highest bite forces out there. Just got to stay away of his radius if he whacks me with his tail. They can chomp down at over 2,500 PSI, which is like absolutely incredible. These specific crocodiles over here are absolutely insane. They may not be the biggest crocodile, they're the second largest, the most capable of taking down prey items. Having said that, this is the only species of crocodile, well, the species of crocodile that takes more human lives than any other wild animal because they include us in their diet. I'm watching you. You see, crocodiles are intelligent, really smart, and they can actually, their cognition is able to work like together, they are that cognitive that they can work as a team, so to speak, in order to catch something. So he's like, I'm stalking you, Bryce, while I'm trying to get this guy to go inside his enclosure or his water. There's some big boys in there. Big, big boys. Some studies suggest that a love for animals has a genetic basis. So how do we teach those people who do not have that genetic predisposition towards loving animals like these that are your so-called unloved animals? Like Perhaps by curiosity? And what better way than a highly feared animal that looks bizarre and is almost intriguing, which gives it like a, let's say a teddy bear aspect to it. But it's not a teddy bear, this guy is. Feisty. Curiosity is a basic element of our cognition, which is a huge motivator for learning. They call this the Goldilocks effect. Now the original psychological term for fear of the unknown is xenophobia. Many of the human population have a fear of the unknown, this xenophobia, towards snakes, sharks, spiders, and in this case, crocodiles. One of the ways in which one can overcome fear is to learn about what you're afraid of. But in most cases, people are content with their fear of certain animals and don't really want to overcome that fear. So how can we help? And that's where these guys come in. Your weird and wonderful yet funny looking crocs. And now because they don't look like a typical crocodile, this sparks curiosity. And what did we learn about that in the neuroscience and psychology of curiosity? Well, that curiosity is a huge motivator for learning. Stay there, don't come out at me. And we only are afraid of things that we don't know about. So the more we learn, the less we're afraid. And if curiosity is a motivator for learning about something, then if you learn about it, then you're less afraid of it. So that's how we could get rid of fear of these animals. Got to watch out because there's crocodiles on both sides and there's nesting females here. Like this girl is probably going to <laughs> go for you right there because she's protecting her babies. Oh, supposedly in there, but all her eggs have been collected. You got to stay very mindful. There's a crocodile right there who's probably, if I walk in front of her, going to get very upset and quite cranky. Now in the psychology and neuroscience of us humans, curiosity becomes a thing where we get intrigued. So we want to learn about something. So if you're curious about something, you want to learn 
more about it and the more you learn about something the less fearful you are of some things <sighs> the fly bugged me more than the crocodile there <laughs> so these crocodiles might just be able to infect a whole entire generation with a love for these so-called unloved creatures like crocodiles and whatever did you know us as humans protect the things we love So curiosity with something like a white Nile croc might just be the reason people fall in love with these animals. Hey, look at this little guy. Hey, hi, hi. He's also got beautiful green eyes. And because of that, people will fall in love with these animals and actually start to learn about them. It may look like I'm choking this animal, but he's okay. And because of that, it'll inspire people to work on cleaner waterways, protecting habitat, and doing everything we can in our power to protect the natural world around us. Sometimes it's all about finding these peaceful, tranquil, beautiful places such as this. Almost untouched by humans. Almost. They all want some attention from me now. As you can see, crocodiles are actually really afraid of us humans. Even though the larger ones do tend to view us as food, the small ones like this, well, maybe not this guy. He seems like he's okay or not. So just imagine what good could be done if there were crocodiles like these in zoos all around the world. So these strange looking animals over here might just be able to infect a whole generation with a love for these so-called unloved creatures. They might inspire the kid who's grown up in the concrete jungle to move out to the middle of nowhere and save an entire species of weird, curious looking animals. Who knows? Similarly to how those albino Burmese pythons at kids parties have inspired so many of us young minds and current herpetologists. Crocodiles love them or hate them. They play an important role in our ecosystem and they are vital for the survival of many other species, not just us humans. Because let's be honest, would you want to live in a world that has no crocs? <laughs> I know I wouldn't and neither would some of my nutty friends. Sorry, friends. But you guys are nutty. So am I. Don't worry. Own it. Listen to that. That's 2,500 PSI chomping down right there. If you get stuck in those doors, like, no ways. No ways you get getting out. Yo! That's power. Studies have proven that captive crocodiles actually live much better lives than their wild counterparts. So that is because of stuff like pressure, habitat destruction, pollution, building dams, all sorts of stuff has a huge impact on the wild population of Nile crocodiles. Maybe an animal like this can become an ambassador and help bring awareness to these wild crocodiles of its species that are struggling with things like pollution, pesticides, habitat destruction, persecution, human wildlife conflict, change of environment like dams being built. Maybe we could come up with an alternative solution and avoid this whole human wildlife conflict issue. I mean, if you're educated on crocodile behavior, you could adjust how you could do things so there's no need to kill these animals and we can live in harmony together. So maybe a white crocodile is not a bad thing and can actually inspire those young minds who come up with these new incredible solutions. Just maybe. Ooh, this girl's perfectly beautiful. <laughs> wow, that was loud. Go. No. Go. Ooh. There, got a nice tooth. And all of that to get a nice tooth. Maybe I can get a friend to make me a cool necklace from it. Hint, hint. Nudge, nudge. So as you can see, there are loads of big female Nile crocodiles and even larger males down there, like huge, huge. Remember, crocodiles can replace their teeth up to 50 times, 50 sets of new teeth, which is absolutely incredible. They have between 62 to 64 teeth, about a dozen less than alligators do, but you do not want to get stuck in 
their bite force in their jaws. <laughs> Thanks to Israel Spruch and the Bite Sea Croc team for letting me film these animals. If you want to see them in person for yourself, go check them out. They are not going to be in South Africa for much longer as they are going off to some incredible facilities overseas and who knows. They might just be the reason for people to start dedicating their lives to saving these incredible creatures in the wild.